I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. These words I repeated many, many, many times as a child. I can't even count how many times I recited it with my hand over my heart and looking at the flag. <clears throat> but today, um, the national anthem and standing for the flag has become a controversy, uh, dealing with uh, NFL players sitting during the national anthem. My speech today is persuading them to to take a look at what they're doing and how how their view of protesting um, is actually very disrespectful to the men and women who have lost their lives in support of what the flag stands for. <clears throat> so I kind of want to today I kind of want to show kind of some of the history of the flag and the national anthem and why it's important to respect it. Um, kind of go over the controversy that has happened lately in the last month or so um, and then to kind of give a, an alternative way of bringing to light issues that are currently in our society and maybe a more productive way, more effective way of addressing those issues. So first, uh, <clears throat> the flag, the first flag was created by the Continental Congress June 14th, 1777. Uh, it was only had 13 stars and 13 red and white stripes, but has progressed over time to be on the flag we know today with 50 stars and 13 stripes, representing the original 13 colonies. Uh, so during my research, I found what is called the Citizen's Almanac. It was handed out for decades to people trying to become citizens of the United States. Um, that weren't natural born citizens. It went over important details about the flag, meanings of the flag, and general history that they needed to know to become a citizen. Um, the it goes over the national anthem. Most people know that the Star Spangled Banner was written by Francis Scott Key after the attack by the British on Fort McHenry. Uh, he the next morning after the attack, because he was on the ship that was attacking Fort McHenry, um, he saw the flag still flying and that the Americans hadn't lost the fort. And was it so inspired that he wrote what we know now today as the National Anthem. So the flag and the National Anthem are a symbol of our country. The flag is flown on ships symbols on our aircraft throughout the world and buildings that denote that they're property of the United States. And one of the biggest reminders for me the flag stands for uh, is the sacrifice of the men and women who have died for our country, um, who have given the ultimate sacrifice. Um, I always see images of a military aircraft loaded with 20 or so caskets all draped in the American flag and that really hits home for me um, and it's a very uh, sore subject when somebody disrespects the flag or the national anthem because to me that's what those represent so lately uh, the controversy has been uh, NFL players sitting during the national anthem as a form of protest for current political issues dealing with race uh, the issues between uh, police and citizens, um, most notably Colin Kaepernick sitting during the national anthem during preseason game. Um, I find this very disrespectful for those who have served in the military, died for the for our country, but also as a military member, I support his right to protest the way he feels necessary. But I don't believe the media attention that he's gotten and other players have gotten is quite necessary. I, th I think we should address the issues, but not to highlight the fact that players aren't standing during the national anthem, not polarizing their 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 disrespect to the to the national anthem and the flag. Uh, several uh, players have done this, um, not just Colin Kaepernick, um, but 
as reported by ESPN, um, most recently last week during the first regular season game, uh, the Denver Broncos, Brandon Marshall, decided to kneel instead of stand during the national anthem. And because of his decision to do so, he lost two of his uh, endorsements, uh, losing him money because the companies that endorsed him felt that his, his doing that didn't align with how they felt um, a player in his position should act. Because pe players in the NFL, like it or not, have a position of influence over many people. Many people look up to them and they need to understand that they are held to a higher standard than just a regular average citizen. So third, I would like to propose a more productive and, well, what I, I would say, uh, a more effective way of protesting or bringing about change. So one, one reason that comes to mind, or one, one way that comes to mind, is a peaceful protest, organizing people in a peaceful manner. Um, this has already happened in our country in a very tumultuous time in our history. Uh, during the Civil Rights Movement. One of the biggest ones I can think of is Dr. Martin Luther King's uh, March on Washington that ended at, on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial where he gave his I Have a Dream speech. Things like that I believe are more effective in bringing about change than someone sitting on the sidelines instead of standing for the national anthem. Another way to bring about positive change is supporting those groups that are actually actively working to bring about change in their communities, to, to change laws that have been in effect or that are in effect that, that may discriminate. So, uh, groups like the NAACP, for example, for uh, bringing about change for African Americans in our country. Uh, they're a very well-known group and they support many things, uh, civil rights, uh, bringing about change for communities of African Americans where they are discriminated against. And lastly, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the ways I believe that um, NFL players, if they want to make a statement of bringing about change, is for them to actually get involved in their local communities and see what, what issues actually affect where they live, not just uh, issues that they have seen in the media, but find out the issues that they have in their community and supporting so let's say, for example, the police department, understanding, you know, what goes into protecting the area that they live in and knowing the real issues that they have to deal with. So, for me, the reason that I have such respect for the flag is I served in the Honor Guard for the U.S. Air Force. And I've personally given three flags to next of kin, three folded flags, and... For me, that is one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. Seeing the, the emotion in the family member's eyes is something I'll never forget. And that's why I have such respect for the flag. So today I've kind of gone over the importance of the flag and the national anthem throughout our history. Uh, kind of the controversy that's going on in, in the U.S. right now with the NFL players. And kind of a more effective way, I believe, that they can bring about the change they're looking for. But like I said before, I support their right to protest in whatever way they feel necessary. Um, but I think they need to remember that those freedoms that they have to do that aren't free. And that men and women have died so that they can have those. <laughs>